Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon again with the Metaphysical Hour. And I'm finally back from my trips. We've been traveling so much that they've been doing a lot of shows out of the archives. And I should be home all through the holidays unless something very unexpected comes up, which you never know with my work. But at least we're live tonight. But, of course, those of you out there aren't ever sure because when I'm gone, they're doing shows out of the archives, so it can be a toss-up anyway. All right, before we go on, I want to give out the toll-free number in case anybody wants to call in and ask any questions tonight. The toll-free number is 1-888-815-9756, Okay, so I do have a guest tonight, so I'm going to bring her. She's on the line, and we're going to be talking with her. This is one of my authors that we have published and I haven't been able to have her on the show before. But, uh, as you know, we have a lot of authors, and we have more coming all the time on all these fascinating subjects that we, we they write about and we talk about. But tonight the author is Nikki Patello. Her book is Children of the Stars. And this is dealing with the new children, is what I call them, I know Mary Rodwell in Australia, she works with this, and she calls them the new kids on the block. But it's the new children that are coming in, and Nikki calls them the star children. And we're going to be talking about that. But, uh, Nikki, are you there? I am. Good evening, Dolores. Thank you for having me tonight. <laughs> okay. And But first, before we get going on the book, I want you to tell everybody about yourself. Oh, um, well, I am one of these star children, and that's why I write about it. I was born in 1966 um, in Japan. My dad was in the military. And I uh, first realized I had psychic abilities in elementary school. I was able to see my angels and my guides, and it was very scary for me. It was the early 70s. I felt very lost, alone, and very fearful of my gifts. I had no one, literally no one I could talk to. My parents kept telling me I was dreaming. You know, it, it just couldn't be. And when I would talk about angels or guides or messages I was receiving for people, my parents would shush me up. It was very embarrassing for them. And as a result of that, I shut down my abilities for quite some time. And it wasn't until my late 30s that it came back very strong with messages saying that I needed to write about this. Well, that's a caller, but let's, uh, I didn't think we'd get a caller so soon. <laughs> but it beats like that. It's usually a caller. Okay. Uh, well, is, is somebody there? Because we want to get on, you know, at least the bouncer first. Uh, who is there? Yeah. My, yeah, my name's Peter. How you doing? I, I called in before. Uh, you probably don't remember. Well, but, tonight uh, we're going to be talking. Uh, I don't want you to talk to me because we're going to be talking uh, about these new children, the star children. Okay. Is your question dealing? In. What? Uh, is the question oh, dealing wait. with? I'm sorry, I, can't, I couldn't understand you. What? No, no, no. I'm listening. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm just thinking. We're getting getting so many calls for me, and tonight I kind of wanted to focus on this. Was your question dealing with my work or what? Yeah, yeah. I uh, well. What, I didn't uh, catch what you were saying. You're talking about star children tonight? Yeah. That's correct, Peter. We're talking about indigo, crystal, and rainbow children. Yeah, we oh, didn't okay. get a chance to All really right. tell anybody what it was about yet. But, but go ahead. What's your question? Well, you know, I have a question about that since you brought it up. They're, uh, they're the child who is a star child or indigo child who's from Russia. Um, I was wondering if you ever heard of him. And he's a, he claims to be a, I was just curious if you've heard of him. He was on interviewed by Project Camelot. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, um, have you ever heard of that? I was just curious if you ever heard of that. 
Yes. No, I haven't heard so, of that, that particular individual, Peter, but I have to tell you there's literally hundreds of thousands of indigo children, and some of them yes. are actually young adults and adults of today. Oh, okay. Yes, they're definitely yeah, yeah, I figured that. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, Nikki, uh, but, but just there, to give you know, the story I did a that... show on Coast to Coast a few weeks ago, and I dealt with the three waves of volunteers coming in. And we've been, you know, one of them, the last third wave is the new children. And so we've been getting a lot of calls ever since on my show about these. So that's why I was trying to weed it out because we want to focus on yours. But you're, you're, tr- you're saying the truth. There really are hundreds and thousands of these people out there now. That right. I'm seeing these every, every day in my work. Well, but Peter, isn't that fantastic, um, Dolores? It's really exciting to see these children, and I think we're I in know. an environment now where they're more accepted. Okay, if Peter has signed off, let's just go ahead with what we were talking about. But you know, uh, Nikki, what you were saying about um, you know not being accepted, I hear that a lot in my work as a therapist that people could see things and hear things when they were younger, and it's the adults that shut them up. They stifle the ability. That's correct, because they just don't know how to handle it. And for sure, the information that's out today, they didn't have 30 years ago. I mean, people talk about it more. We see it on TV. We see it in movies, on the radio. There's books everywhere. And I think people are more open now about others with these special psychic abilities. Yes. You know, I I know in the old days it wasn't. You just didn't talk about it, but... It, this is very exciting because it is increasing. But, Nikki, let's uh, tell us about you for a minute. Uh, what, is, what do you do for a living? Um, well, I continue to write books. Um, I'm working on my third and my fourth book right now. Uh, before I was a writer, I was actually a molecular biologist. And um, I had always wanted to write, and I was getting messages that I needed to write. And so I just sent um, a message to the universe and my angels and guides saying, okay, if I'm supposed to write, then, you know, show me the way. Well, it wasn't two weeks later I got laid off from my job. And that was very uh, uh, scary. Uh, yes, the universe you know, you want to manifest the universe works. The when you want to manifest works something, right. You've got to make sure that you're ready to receive it no matter what happens. And so I was out, and I was starting to put my feelers out for a writing job. And by a fluke, I swung by a friend's house. I was sitting in her little waiting area, and a girl there was saying she knows of these people that are looking for writers. Um, so I got a job with a wonderful company called Edgineering where I wrote compliance training courses for the FDA. And that started me writing and then writing my books and channeling. And it, it was a wonderful turn of events, but it, it was very scary. And I just have to say, when you manifest something, you know, be sure that you're ready to receive what's going to happen to you because I certainly got laid off my job very quickly. Uh-huh. That's what I'm always telling people. Be careful what you ask for because you're going <laughs> to get it. And That's the right. Universe works in, the universe works in very strange ways, and it will make it happen in ways you would never, ever imagine. Yeah, and it's scary. I was slightly fearful, and I had to keep pushing that fear out of my mind, just knowing, because I could hear my angels and my guides, so I knew that it was coming. You know, I just had to get my feelers out and kind of work towards it a little bit. But uh-huh. it's a, it's amazing what the universe provides for you when you ask for it. Oh, yes, and it's never the way you think it's going to happen. Yes. But... Uh... <laughs> But uh, why did you decide to write about this subject, about the star children? Well, because I I grew up an indigo child. I was one of these psychic children. And, um, yeah. you know, my whole life, Dolores, I knew that I was here for a reason. And I get fan mail from all over the world, from Europe, from Australia, from South America. And these young adults and children say the same thing to me all the time. I know I'm meant here for a reason. I don't know what it is. And that's exactly yeah. how I felt my whole life, and I just want your listeners to know, you know, that that's a common feeling for a star child. You know you're here for a reason, and you don't know what it is. And sometimes it's later in life before you figure it out. 
Yes, I hear this all the time with the clients that come to see me. They say, I, I don't want to be here. This is not home. I know I don't belong here. I don't know where home is, but it's not here. And uh, they feel very uncomfortable here. But it's That's always right. And really actually, cool. my daughter is actually a crystal child. And um, when she was four, we were sitting in bed one night, and she was saying, Mommy, this isn't my home. And I said, what do you mean this isn't your home? This is our home. This is where you live with Mommy and Daddy, and this is your bedroom. She goes, no, Mommy, my home's out there. And she pointed out in space. She said, I'm just here uh-huh. for a little while, and then I'll go home again. You know, she was four years old. At four years old, she knew that this wasn't exactly her home. Well, after I did the Coast to Coast a few weeks ago, that's what happened. The callers that called in and the ones that called in on this show afterwards, they were all saying that. They said they remember being about six years old, standing in the kitchen, telling their mommy, this is not home. I want to go home. The same right. thing. It's, yeah. So and they, it's hard they for realized, them. They, they realize that that young, that something is different. Right. Right. Okay. And they're here for a reason, and it's actually hard for them to be here. Um, They certainly come to a place of higher dimensional consciousness, and it's hard for them to come down to this sort of hard playground, this three-dimensional earth that we live in. Um, It's really tough for some of them. This is this is the densest uh, planet in the whole galaxy. Yeah, Uh, my angels and. uh, it's very hard to be here because it's very heavy and dense to be in a human body. Yes, that's what my angels say. say and they say it's one of the hardest, if not the hardest, playground in our universe. And souls yeah. that reincarnate here on Earth um, become some of the most advanced souls in our universe as far as going on to be guides and angels or whatever they're going to do. But once you incarnate here, you know, five times, 500 times, whatever it may be, you really become an advanced soul. Because it is so hard that wonderful lessons are learned here for sure. Yes, I was told that you had to be very brave to come to Earth and you're greatly respected for doing it because it is not easy to be here. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Okay, let's uh, talk about some of these. You were... I know. Let's talk about the different kinds. You said the indigo, the crystal, and the rainbow. Now, that's I've heard correct. About the, yeah, I know a lot of people have heard about the indigo children, and I've heard them say that they don't like that term. But, you know, that was termed many years ago as the color of, of the aura. It's what they they How about they call them the, the indigo children? That's but correct. Um, that, I'm sorry, Mr. Lawrence, yeah? what's that? Um, I said it was years ago was whenever they first coined that term, the indigo children, and it was yeah, based the term on was the actually color. coined. The term was actually coined about thirty years ago um, by Nancy yeah. Ann Cope, and um, as we all know, she was a parapsychologist, and she actually developed a system that classified people's personalities according to their aura, the hue of their aura. And she wrote a really wonderful book in the early 80s calling Understanding Your Life Through Colors. And according to her, she says that, you know, auras come and go on Earth through history. And she noticed about 100 years ago, um, indigo, this color indigo, began to appear in a few individuals' auras. Uh huh. That was so when I heard too. That that's what I heard too. That it had to do with the color of the aura. But that's let's correct. Tell people, the difference between the uh, indigo and the crystal and the rainbow. Uh, uh, see if you can define that to them. What What is the difference? But start with the, the uh, indigo first. Sure. The indigo children came first, and you know, scouts began to appear literally a hundred years ago. But the main sort of onslaught of the indigo was between 1970 and 1992. And the indigos are the trailblazers. Um, they're the ones who want to shock us into awareness, and they want to instigate change. Um, you know, we've sort of hemmed ourselves into these archaic systems that really no longer 
serve the good of humanity. And we need warriors. These children are literally like little warriors. They will fight you tooth and nail. They are the trailblazers. They've got to knock down these archaic systems that we have set up. And, you know, these are systems of health care, um, you know, politics, schools, you name it. We, we all, there's these archaic systems, and they're the trailblazers. They want to knock this down. And the purpose, the purpose is to seek out the truth. And they want to take us off this old energy grid and put us onto the new one. But they are certainly brave souls. Um, they have problems here. Um, they don't like untruths. Um, and they know when people are lying. All star children do. All indigo crystal and rainbow children. They know when you are lying and they don't like it. And particularly the indigos. Um, like I said, they they want to knock down these systems and sort of shock us into reality, and they're showing us that we really need to change. Okay. Now, uh, what the are the next... characteristics? Is the crystal the crystal children? What their characteristics? Okay, yeah, the crystal children were the next set of children to come along, and they began, you know, once again, early scouts could be the earlier 1900s, but the, the main onslaught of crystal children are 1990, and they'll continue to come through 2010. Um, these are children that are considered to be fully developed masters. Uh, they carry sort of a Christ consciousness with them, and their main purpose is to take us to the next level in our evolution and reveal to us our inner and higher power. Uh, the crystal children certainly function as like a group consciousness rather than as an individual. And they okay. certainly live by the law of one or global oneness. Um, if you have a child born in that time, you know, you may hear them talking about how we're all one. You know, there is no Asians. There are no South Americans. We're all in this boat together. And um, they're, they're pretty amazing children. And the third group that's coming through are the rainbow children. And rainbow children are just now beginning to appear. They've been coming along for the last five or six years, but they really won't start coming in a massive wave until about 2010, and um, they're the third generation, and they've also come here to help humanity. Um, Rainbow children have a few more interesting characteristics, and they, um, they have huge hearts, and they're born to smile. They're very forgiving children. If you have ever met a rainbow children, you, you'll just feel their energy and know that they're special. They were born to smile. Okay. And they're going to but complete, the most, you know, the sort of final stages of the indigo and the crystal children. You know, this, this breakdown of our paradigm of traditional thinking. Uh-huh. Okay, but that's no. I I get letters all the time from people who think they're, that their children are with these new children. We always all want to think our children are special, but do you have any way they could uh, know? They any kind of characteristics that the parent might notice? I do. Um, kind of you can parents? also visit my website. My website has all the characteristics of indigo crystal and rainbow children, and okay. um, the website is starchildren.info. And I've got all the characteristics listed. Uh, some of the characteristics of the indigo children are, um, first of all, they can be very angry children. They may even be a little depressed. But they, one of the biggest characteristics is they act like royalty. You know, they know they are meant to be here. You know, they feel honored to be here. Um, they have a, a real good sense of self. Um, they will certainly define authority because they're trailblazers. They're meant to break down these old paradigms that we have. Um, they don't like waiting in line. Um, they will not respond to guilt trips. If you try to guilt an indigo child into doing something, it's not going to work. And they have, you know, empathy for others. 
Um, they're intelligent. They're talented. They may daydream quite a bit. I hear this a lot from the, the email I get. Um, people that are star children, it's true of uh, indigo, crystal, and rainbow children. They may daydream a little bit. They sort of slip into a higher dimensional consciousness and then come back when they're ready. Now, the crystal children, on the other hand, have a, a little different set of characteristics. Um, you'll first notice them by their large eyes and very intense stare. Uh, crystal children are highly affectionate children. Um, and these children may speak later in life. And they do this because they're psychic. You know, they're communicating with their guides and angels, and they're not seeing a need to talk. So if you have a child that may be speaking later in life, mm -hmm. um, don't feel bad. Don't let the doctor tell you there's something wrong with your child. You just may have a crystal child. Uh, they are extremely connected to animals. Uh, they're artistic, they're sensitive, um, and they are incredibly forgiving. Um, they're, they're really amazing children. And the last set are the rainbow children. And like I said, there's just a few scouts that are just starting to come now. You will not see a lot of rainbow children at this point. Um, starting 2010 is when the first big wave is really going to start coming through. Um, and they come to parents that are actually crystal parents. And they have not incarnated here before. They don't have a lot of karmic debts to pay while they're here. And they come to pretty functional families. You know, they don't choose dysfunctional families. And the couple that I've seen, they've had crystal moms. <laughs> and these kids are all about service. Um, you know, they want to help people. They love everyone. They, they are fearless. Um, they have strong wills and high energy, and they're attuned to color and to color vibrations around them. Um, of course, they're very telepathic and just have a very effervescent personality and a real enthusiasm for life. And once again, if you need to know more about the listing of all these characteristics, you can see, see it on my website at starchildren.info. Okay. Well, it sounds like when you're describing the uh, indigo children, does that mean that the parents have a difficulty with these, if disciplining them, or it sounds like they are harder to work with? They are harder, harder to work, work with, with. Than the others. That's correct, Dolores, because, you know, they're the trailblazers. You know, they're here to get us out of these archaic systems that we have, and they're all about truth. They don't like being lied to, and they don't like being in school. I mean, some of these schools, are they're kind of archaic to them, and they want to bring newer, better ways of doing things, and they want people to listen to them. You know, that's their kind of um, sense of self. You know, you need to listen to me. I have something to say. I have something to tell you. Now, um, some indigo children suffer from depression. And, you know, it's real important if you have a child that suffers from depression to let them know that you're, you're with them. Um, you need to let them know that they have a purpose. There's a reason for them to be here, and it's a very important and special purpose. And, you know, not to bug out. They need to stay here, and they agree to come do something, and, and they need to do it. But they need to know that they're special. Okay. But I was, I see, I spoke at conferences dealing with these new children, and parts of the of the conference has to do with educating the educator. So you probably know where I'm going with that because the, right. the teachers don't they don't understand these children and they have difficulty with them. Right. And they wanted to know advice, you know, what do I do with these children? Do you have yeah. anything to say about that? Well, um I think that um teachers may need to think about new ways of even looking at children. 
Um, teachers may need to know that there are a different wave of children that are going to be coming through their classrooms. You know, some of them may be kind of difficult, like the indigo children. Um, some of them will be very loving, like the crystal or rainbow children. But I think a big thing for them is just to accept them and let them have their voice. Let them know that they do have a voice and that they can make a difference. Um, I know nobody wants to encourage bad behavior, but, you know, they just need to know that, that they're needed here. And, yeah, you're different, and that's okay. I think different is kind of cool now. You know, different is the new yeah, cool. It, is. it really is. Uh-huh. Well, one thing that these children, they had panels of these children on these Radio. Okay, everybody, I hope that you stayed with us. The little gremlins are active again, and tonight they knocked us off the air, and I don't know uh, why, but I was, I don't remember where we were, but I think I was saying something when all of a sudden it went dead. We were that talking about talking- teachers. Yeah, and I said that that whenever I've done the conferences, they have panels of children, and one of the things the children said was that in a classroom, the teacher will ask them for an answer, maybe to a problem, a mathematical problem or something, and the child gives the teacher the answer, and the teacher says, "Well, how did you come? How did you find that answer?" And they said, "I just know it." Well, of course, that is not acceptable to the teacher. They want to know step by step. You don't just know the answers to things. (laughs) Well, that's it. And certainly those answers come from a higher dimensional consciousness. And um, Uh they're incredible. That's amazing, Dora. I actually have never heard of that. Yeah, that's what the children are saying themselves. Another thing the children have said was that in a class, they said, why do they keep going over and over and over the same thing? They said, we got it the first time. Why do they have to keep (laughs) repeating it? So, see, it's going to be a different way of teaching. That's what the teachers are going to have to understand. Right, right. And, um, yeah, I, 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 it's difficult. And it's difficult for parents, too. Um, parents that have star children need to do special things. You know, they need to let their kids know that they love them. And, um, you know, they may not understand them, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll work out what's going on with you. Um, if you, if you think you have, if you're a parent, or a teacher of one of these star children, um, you know, it's real important to keep, like, stress to a minimum. Specifically for indigo children, they don't take stress well. Um, and it's important to sometimes shut off the TV. You know, I know we live in this world where we're on the computer all the time, but it's really important for all three of these children to get outside and connect with nature. When they're outside okay. in nature, they can raise their vibrational frequency, and, and this will help them. And you certainly need to let them get good food, you know, food with high vibrational frequencies. I know we live in this McDonald age. But if you can get some fruits and vegetables down your star children, it will be really good for them. And, you know, you need to encourage them um, to make friends. And a- another really amazing thing that I found about these star children, Dolores, is they find each other. If you're in a group of children, you know, you'll see star children, just they're drawn to each other. You know, they may pair up or get in little groups. Um, but I've seen that on the playground. You know, there may be a star child out there, and if there's another star child that comes along, they immediately hook up, hook up with them. And I think that's true of these uh, children their whole lives, that they will be drawn um, to other star children, to other souls or individuals that have their same vibrational frequency. Okay. Uh, because, well, some, that's what I'm thinking. It has to do with frequencies, with energy, and they're picking that up without even realizing it. 
Yeah, and that's another thing. Um, you know, I don't know if this is a law of physics where they say opposites attract. That is certainly not true of star children. Um, yeah. Specifically with star children, souls or individuals with like energy are drawn to each other. You know, if your energy, it, that's why you have the friends you have. I mean, not just for, you know, karmic experiences and spiritual lessons, but your energy is certainly drawn to each other for some reason. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. But, uh, well, in my work, one thing that I was told to tell the teachers and the parents, really, is, is that the main problem in the schools is that the kids are bored. They don't have a, you know, they learn so quickly that they get bored sitting around waiting for the rest of the class to catch up. And that's when they're bored, they become disruptive. And that, they said the one answer would be to, to separate them if you have to, but give them something to do outside of the uh, other curriculum because they've already caught up. They said to give them challenges. Even if you give them something to tear apart and put back together again, you're keeping their mind active because right. they're already ahead of the rest of the class. Right. Well, that certainly comes with their psychic abilities. Um, they're highly intelligent souls. And, you know, like I said, they're, they're meant to. They're here on a group mission um, to help us and to help this earth and all the things on it. And, you know, just like I said, schools and governments, um, health care, you know, we're, we're hemmed to, to these really archaic systems. Um, you know, I've seen some schools that are better than others, but it, I know it certainly must be challenging for teachers to try and find not only new things to do for these kids, but different things, you know, things that aren't normal, things that are off the beaten path. Um, so maybe like you were saying, take something apart and put it back together again, because it's funny you said that, because certainly as they grow, go back to their soul groups, when they pass on and go back to their soul groups, um, some of us experiment with that, with, with our energy and making things and, and taking them back apart again. Uh-huh. But it's just something to keep them their mind occupied. Right. And you know that must be hard for a teacher with 30 kids in their classroom. Yeah. But it would make it easier than, you know, than having them be disruptive. Right. That's correct. I want to ask your opinion about these drugs. You know, I know what I think, but I think you probably think the same thing, you know, that they're putting them on Ritalin. Uh, that appalls me because I don't, I don't understand putting a normal child on any kind of medication they don't really need. But what do you think about them putting these, these new children on Ritalin? Well, I think that it is truly critically important that if your child gets diagnosed with AD or ADHD, that you just don't run off and join this medicated bad bandwagon. And the reason is, is medicating these special children, it severely inhibits their abilities. Um, and it's true of all of us. If we take a lot of medicine, it lowers our vibrational frequency, and we know that we yes. have to raise our vibrational frequency to connect with our angels and our guides. Um, I, I can't imagine how difficult it would be for a parent or even a teacher, you know, to deal with a child that's been diagnosed with this. But, you know, one of the problems... You know, like I said, with medicating them is it lowers their vibrational frequency. And if you do that, they'll be unable to, to you know, find their way, to find their life's purpose. If you lower their energy level, um, they just can't access this higher energy or this higher vibrational frequency while they're medicated. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they aren't even diagnosed. They just say that's what they have, the teacher does, because they're, bored and they're disruptive. Right. That's where they get at their, you know, attention deficit is just because they, they're they not being challenged. Right. So it, it's much easier to put them on medication, but I don't agree with it at all. No, I don't agree with it either. Just because I know that it, it they'll find it more difficult in their life to access this higher vibrational frequency if they're medicated. And, you know, they're here for a reason. 
Um, it's usually the indigo children that get diagnosed with ADD or ADHD or some of these other attention deficit disorders. Um, but they're meant to have that. They are meant to drive us nuts. They're meant to show us that there is a different way of doing things and that we have got to change. And, you know, when they start doing that, it drives us nuts. It's like, no, you know, you're a round peg. You go in the round hole, and that's what you need to do. Um, but, you know, these indigos, they're the trailblazers. They're supposed to show us new ways of doing things, and maybe by being bored and challenging the parents, challenging the schools, it will make us think of a different and better way to do things. Uh-huh. Well, I have a big family. And one of one of my daughters, I know when she was little and she was in school, all they said in those days was, well, she's hyperactive. And they didn't right. think about putting anybody on drugs if they were just hyperactive, you know. Right. So th- times changed, you know, after that. Right. And now, you know, times changed and they started giving kids this diagnosis and medicating them. But now hopefully times are changing again. And, you know, hopefully um, the psychologist or therapist will start, you know, getting this new information and, again, start thinking, well, you know what, maybe we should try not medicating them. Maybe we need to think of a different way of doing things. Instead of just deadening the senses, I don't see that as an answer at all. That's right, and that's the whole purpose. You know, they, they've been brought here to align us with higher consciousness, and they have to do this by changing things. You know, it's just a process of questioning and challenging these archaic um, systems that we have. Okay. Um, but I know it, it, what I'm finding in my work that, see, a lot of these people are being brought here because they're really volunteers. They volunteered to come at this time to help the world because we are getting ready. We're in the middle of it now. We're going into something very wonderful. The whole world is changing, and they have to be here to help us. So their role, in all, their role is very important in all of this. It's very important. Um, They are actually teachers of conscious awareness. Um, You know, they want to confront us with these realities in in our families, in our communities. And, you know, by changing our consciousness or changing our conscious awareness, it moves us forward. It moves us forward spiritually, and it moves us into higher dimensional consciousness. And that is certainly, you know, what you're talking about. That is where the planet is going at this time. You know, we're, we're moving through these sort of little steps of dimensional consciousness. And, you know, I, always, I don't know about you, Dolores. I always say, you know, you, you better keep up. You've got to keep up with this. Because um, you fall behind on the old energy grid, it won't be good in the long run. There's a, a lot of changes are happening, and some of us are, can and pick it up. You know, we're sensitive to it. The right. other ones, the, you know, they just don't know anything's happening, and you can't tell them about it because that's not where they are. But I think right. this is the reason metaphysics are changing, and they're beginning to become more popular. The metaphysical ideas and the books out there, getting people to think along a different line. Right. That's right. And... Um, I know for me, sometimes weird things happen to me, and I have a very good friend who is also psychic. She's actually an animal communicator, and, you know, I, at least yeah. I have someone that I can call up and say, you know, there's this weird thing going on. Is this happening to you? She said, yeah, this is happening to me, too. Uh-huh. So I, certainly now if you think weird things are happening to you, you can reach out to the web. You know, there's so many wonderful people, um, so many authors that have these blogs, you know, funky things are happening to you, you know, just Google stuff and, you know, you'll be able to relate to other people that it's happening to as well because it's a little scary. Uh, Yeah, after my Coast to Coast show, we had so many emails and calls and they all said, how can we find other people that are like us because they feel like they're all alone out there? And one of them suggested they they said, why can't we have a website where we can all hook up together and communicate? Because I can't put these people together because of the privacy issue. 
But I said that may be a good idea if somebody would start a website where these people could communicate. They know they're not alone. Right, like a little chat group. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually, what that's said. a really great idea, Dolores. Um, like I said, a, a lot of this fan email that I get, um, it's they ask the same questions and they say the same things. You know, they're like, you know, I can't believe these are my parents. You know, I know I'm supposed to be here. I don't know why. These are the funky things that are yeah. happening to me. And, you know, I always email every one of them back and, you know, whether whatever category they fit into, I give them information and let them know that, um, you know, you'll you'll change. We sort of go through these transitions. Um, you know, we're all transitioning into higher vibrational frequency and higher consciousness. And certainly, funky things happen while you're doing that. Well, that's what I try to tell them. They're not alone that there are hundreds and hundreds out there, if my work is any indication, and yours is the same way, that there's hundreds of them out there that, you know, more than that, that are, they all feel the same way, and they have to know they're not alone, that they're just different, and it doesn't mean that's negative. It just means they, they're not fitting in with the, what, what is the norm, and what is normal anyway, who knows anyway. Right. But I think the definition of normal is certainly changing. It certainly changed from when I was a child, and, you know, my parents were real embarrassed about me talking about stuff. You know, now when my daughter says, yeah. you know, Mom, this isn't my home. My home is out there. I just live here for a little while. You know, I encourage that. I understand that, and I accept, accept that. I would never stifle, you know, these psychic abilities that she has. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, some parents have told me that one of my clients talk about their kids talking about past lives. You know, they come up to and say, remember, Mommy, when I was a mommy and you were the little girl? Right. Isn't that amazing? And I tell them, encourage that. Don't just tell them. Usually people say, well, that's crazy. You don't talk like that. But encourage them to remember these things because that's what it's all about right now in this time we're living. Is remembering these, uh, bringing these abilities back. Right, and that's certainly what you can um, do as a parent, um, you know, is understand that your child has a gift. And recently I got two emails from parents of star children, and they said just what you said, Dolores. I have this child. This is what they're like. You know, they're telling me they're talking to angels. I don't know if I need to go to a psychologist. I don't understand them. And, you know, I'm certainly always happy to send someone one of my books when I when I hear something like that because I think, you know, this parent is struggling. They're reaching out. They're trying to understand it, and they're trying to find additional information. And I think that's really amazing for parents to do that, to, to try and understand what's going on. But, you know, I don't think the answer is sending a child to a psychologist because many of them don't un, don't even know about this. They're That's definitely right. not into metaphysics. They're not into metaphysics, and they don't even know about these special children. So I think sending them to a psychologist, you know, as, as a rule, it may be a bad idea because they won't understand. They may just want to put them on some kind of drug. Right. Um, well, it's good to always in- encourage them to um, let their children understand things that are difficult for them and to let them explore areas and to find out where their interest lies, lies and where their life purpose lies. Um, they, they, I'm always so touched when a parent reaches out to me. Um, you know, all parents struggle at times with their children, but certainly with uh, star children, the parents have extra challenges in their life for sure. But, Dolores, you know, you and I both know that we agree to this. You know, we agree oh, yeah. to come as the mom or the daughter, and we agree to come in these situations for a specific purpose. And I always encourage parents and, you know, say that, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. You know, you're, you are supposed to be their parent and encourage this, encourage that. Mm-hmm. 
But see, that's what I found. You know, I wrote a book on between death and life where when you die and you go to the other side, you review your life and you make your plan to come back. You make your contracts with all the people you're going to interact with. And I found it's the child that picks the parents. It picks the parents it wants. It picks the environment where it thinks it'll be able to work out the next lesson. So it's all definitely planned out. You yeah, and it's hard. Like, yeah. The, you can't say it's random because you agreed to it on the other side that you would accept this child and help it to develop. Yeah. Even if it's a handicapped child, you still made the decision, I will work with you, and this is what we're going to learn from this situation. Right. And I, I always admit... Yeah. I always admire souls that agree to come down to this very difficult, hard, three-dimensional, tough world with extra challenges. Um, And certainly being handicapped or scarred or mentally challenged or with Down syndrome, you know, I I look at these children, I think, oh, my God, you're special. You know, you agree to really have it tough in your life to really spiritually advance, and I really admire that. See, that's what I found in the work that I do. And I see hundreds and thousands of clients, you know, that's where I've gotten my information from. I found that there are more souls in line for the handicapped bodies than there are for the normal bodies. And that people really? might find that hard to un- hard to understand. But the soul realizes that you will know, we pay a lot more karma by being in a handicapped body than it would be in a normal body. This is if it has a lot of karma to be, to repay. And I always say, what does that soul teach everyone that sees it? Well, they said, first of all, the soul agrees it's going to learn a lesson of dependency because sometimes it has to depend on the parents, the caregivers, to take care of it. Then what do the caregivers, the parents, learn from this child? This, and what do does everybody what do you think when you see someone in a wheelchair? What do you think whenever you see, a, a, you know, a Down syndrome or a child that is re- crippled or retarded? How does that affect you? Everything that they are teaching everyone something all the time. This is why, if you look at it from that way, when I see someone like that, an adult or a child, I just think, you really chose a hard one this time. Right. You don't feel sorry for them because this is the plan. Right. And it may be hard for a lot of people out there to understand until you get into this way of thinking about reincarnation and metaphysics, you know? Yeah, and I certainly think that, I think it teaches us compassion. And maybe you can confirm this with me, but my, my angels tell me that you can actually advance what would be equivalent to two or three lifetimes in one lifetime if you pick a life with one of these hardships. Yeah, but because this is just a school that we're going to. It's all Earth is, and you come here to learn lessons. Some lessons are harder than the others but it's time that you take that class, so to speak. And this is a school where you can't uh, skip a grade, but you can have to repeat a grade if you don't get it right the first time. And then you go on to the next lesson, which may or may not be easier. It may be harder, but it's just the next class that you agree to. Right, right. But, you know, the, the people can't say, well, look what God did to me and all of this. You set the circumstances up and you agree to it. That's exactly right. And I find um, with my family members and my friends, um, Dolores, that, you know, we have little spiritual lessons. We've got a big spiritual lessons, but we've got little lessons as we go. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure if you find yourself in a pattern, like the same thing keeps happening to you over and over, it's because you're not learning the spiritual lesson. Once you learn that lesson, yeah. you know, you can go on, get out of that pattern and go to the next lesson. Yes, because I have clients who draw the same circumstances to them again and again, the same type of man, for instance, right. or the same thing keeps happening to them again and again. That's because they haven't got it. They haven't figured it out. Right. Once they do, 
then the pattern will stop and they'll move on to something else. Yeah, it's interesting. We're, we're here. There's a lot more here than what most of us see or hear or feel. Um, there's certainly a yes. higher purpose. And, you know, we're all trying to get up to the front of the train. And we do that by learning our lessons. And, um, you know, some of the lessons are real tough. You know, it's just tough here, Dolores. There, there's some really hard lessons here. That's what I've been told. This is a very challenging planet. But you come here to learn emotions and limitations. And that's and one of the also, hardest lessons. Yeah, I'm ahead. sorry, Ms. Dolores. My angels have also said that there's wonderful things that are experienced here on Earth that they don't have in other planets in the universe. And one of those yes, that they talk to me about is bravery. You know, bravery cannot be found in other universes or other planets. It's something specific to this Earth. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's wonderful there's other, things. Um, there's other lessons, too. You know, there are other planets, too, that don't don't have free will. This is the planet of free will. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah, because that's why I've written so many books. I've got so all these things keep coming. But it comes from the people I work with that come to see me. Well, I'm watching the clock, and we're coming around to the time to stop. The hour has gone very quickly. Oh, God. But, Nikki, let's, do you have any advice for these parents, the ones that may be having difficulty with these type of children? Any advice before we, we sign off? Well, take a deep breath. Know that you have agreed to come as a parent of one of these special children. Know that your child is special, that they're here to make a difference. And they may be different, um, they may be more challenging, um, but you agreed to nurture and help this special soul become who they are and find their life's purpose and to help this world, help this earth and the people on it. So take a deep breath, um, help nurture them, know that you agree to do it, and help them find their life's purpose because they have one. And it's really important. Whatever their life's purpose is, it's really, really important. Help them find it. That's very good. Now, are you selling your books on your website, or do you want to no. contact our website? Uh, there, yeah, contact your website. Okay. But your website, if you want to give it out again in case people just want to talk to you. Absolutely, and you can contact me via my website if you have any questions. I answer every single email. I love hearing from people. I love hearing your stories and your input. And my website is www.starchildren.info. And please feel free to come and read through it. I have checklists of all the characteristics of all the star children, and I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your stories and your challenges. Okay, and if anybody is interested in Nikki's book called The Children of the Stars, you can get it from our website for our company. And the company is Ozark Mountain Publishing, but it's abbreviated on our website, www. Dot Ozark Mountain, O Z A R K M T dot com. Or if you're overseas, that's O Z A R K M T dot com. And our 800 number is 1 800 935 0045. And it's time for us to leave now. So thank you, Nikki, for coming on tonight. Thank you so much for having me, Ms. Dolores. I really enjoyed it. Okay, and thanks, everybody, for listening. So good night, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos, and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.